Welcome to the New Jersey State Museum's Ask the Experts Video Learning Library. My name is Jason Shine, and I'm a paleontologist here at the State Museum and co-leader of the Bighorn Basin Dinosaur Project. In this inaugural season of the Video Learning Library, we're going to focus on paleontology, or the study of ancient and extinct plants and animals. As any paleontologist will tell you, there are a lot of misunderstandings out there about our science. This video series is going to dig into some of the most commonly asked questions we get so that you guys have a better understanding of what it is we do and how we do it. So let's get started. One of the most common questions paleontologists get is, how do we know where to find the dinosaurs? And after answering that question dozens of times over the years, I've realized that people actually mean one of two different things when they ask it. They either mean, on the entire surface of the earth, how do we know where to find the dinosaurs? Or they mean, once you get to a site, how do you know where to start digging to find the dinosaurs? Both of those are really good questions, and we'll start digging into the first one this time and save the other question for next time. So how do we even know where on Earth's surface to start looking? Couldn't we just head outside and look for fossils? Yeah, we could, but we'd almost never find anything that way. Instead, we save ourselves a lot of time by doing a little background research first, because every good research project starts with a few good questions. First, what kind of animals are we looking for? Life on Earth has changed dramatically over the last three billion years, with different time periods and eras being characterized by different groups of animals. The Mesozoic era is known as the Age of Reptiles, because reptiles, including dinosaurs, seem to dominate the landscapes throughout that era. After studying the rocks and fossils from this era, we know that there were other types of plants and animals alive during this time too, and we can even have an idea of what the climate was like. So when we're looking in Mesozoic rocks for dinosaur fossils, we often stumble upon other kinds of life from this time. Now that we know what age of rock to look for, next we really need to know what type of rock to look for. And there are three basic types of rock. There's igneous, there's metamorphic, and there's sedimentary. Igneous rocks form when magma or lava cools and turns into stone, so these won't preserve fossils. Metamorphic rocks usually form deep within the earth under a lot of heat and pressure, so usually there's no fossils in those either. Sedimentary rocks, though, are formed when small particles of sand, silt, clay, and even the skeletons of microscopic organisms are deposited or collect in layers. Usually that means these particles sink down to the bottom of lakes, rivers, and oceans. When plants or animals get buried within these sediments, their remains may be preserved or fossilized over thousands or millions of years. So, if we want to find dinosaurs, we know that we have to find sedimentary rocks on Earth's surface that are between 230 and 65 million years old. So great, let's get started. Hmm. Do you happen to know where any Mesozoic Age sedimentary rocks are? That is a pretty specific set of rocks that we have to find. How in the world are we going to find that type of rock on all of Earth's surface? Well, fortunately, others have already done that for us. In fact, geologists have mapped the ages and types of rock over almost the entire surface of the planet. All we have to do is look at some geologic maps, like this one, to find those Mesozoic Age sedimentary rocks we're looking for. These maps show us an incredible amount of information. Each one of these colors and the patterns within each color band tell us the age of the rock and what type of rock it is. The maps also show us where faults are, areas where rocks are folded, and even volcanoes. Thanks to a little digging, we now know some general areas on Earth's surface where we could find dinosaurs. But once you get there, you'll see that these are still huge areas, sometimes thousands of square miles. Finding a dinosaur skeleton out here, even a big one, is like finding a tiny needle buried in a very big haystack. So how do you know exactly where to dig in the midst of all of that vast terrain? We'll have to dig into that question. Until then, let's head out to where the dinosaurs are. As always, thank you for joining us and keep digging.